Hey, what's up everyone? Danny Lightning back with another CSR2 video and today we're going to talk about the Tempest races, alright? Things you need to know before you start the Tempest races. First thing is, boss times can change. You got to remember that because you're probably going out and you're looking up the boss times online. You're finding like, you're finding like Google documents, you're finding websites, you're finding YouTube videos, and you might notice, hey, these all say the boss times are a little bit different. Well, why is that? That's because this game has changed the boss times. They're still very, very similar. So I would look at those boss times, kind of get an idea of which one of those boss time charts is the newest. All right, if you can find the newest one, those are probably the most accurate. And make sure your car is at least a couple tenths of a second faster than the boss because if you have a bad shift, there's a little bit of lag in the game. Um, you know, you get a bad start. If your car is just barely fast enough to do it and you're like, oh, I'm just going to squeak by. I'm going to go ahead and race that boss anyway. And you have that one little teeny tiny mistake or you make an error or something happens. Bam. You just lost that boss car. There's a couple of boss cars you actually want to get. Most of them are kind of just crap or just kind of okay but there's a few really really awesome ones like for example this guy right here the Sesto Elemento one of the best live racing cars in the game you don't want to miss this car okay you don't want to miss this car there's a couple cars that are super super awesome but the most most of the boss cars are just kind of so-so or not very good at all all right but you want to collect all the boss cars as po if possible. Even if they're not great, it's nice to have all the boss cars. So you can say, hey, look. Look what I've got, alright? So, first thing is... Alright, make sure your cars are plenty fast enough before you start Tempest. Alright, so let's move on to the next point. We're going to talk about Elite License. How many cars do you actually need... To get all three elite license and finish all the tempest races well you're gonna need 15 different cars to make elite okay 15 different cars all right so i made this car elite and i actually feel like this was a big mistake now it's not that this is a bad car to make elite because i'm not sure that the one star hurricane is fast enough to make it through tempest 3. All right, I'm not 100% sure this car can do it. The one with three stars breezes us right through it. Now, if I would have locked in, if I would have made a three-star Hurricane Elite, well, I should say Hurricane, I know I don't pronounce that right, but if I would have made a three-star version Elite, that would have been a big mistake. But the only reason I say this was a mistake is because this has no stars. I have absolutely no need for this car right now, and you'll see this got the little Elite symbol right here. Alright, since I made this Elite to get one of the Elite License, I can I cannot strip this car. Watch what happens if I try and strip this car. And this car actually has a Respect Point boost, which really, it's best to make cars Elite that you're going to use for live racing, because you're going to get the Respect Points boost. Alright, cannot strip car. Seriously, after all you did to earn it, this is an elite car. Don't throw it away. So the game will not let me get rid of this crappy car that just sits here. And after I got the elite license, I pulled all of the fusion parts off of this. And pulled all of the stage 6 parts I had off of this. Throw on the 3 star version of the Hurricane. So number 1, you're going to want to be careful on what you make elite. Because once this car is elite, I can't use that for another elite license. And there are three of them. You got to have three tier five cars just for elite license. Okay. And if Tempest four comes out, you're probably going to need a fourth one to make elite. So you temp elite license one, elite license two and elite license three. You're going to need a, a tier one, a tier two, a tier three, a tier four and a tier five car for each of those licenses. And every time you make one of those elite, you can't use it for the next elite license and you can't use it to race the Tempest races. This car is now locked out of any type of Tempest or Elite license event, okay? So be very careful which cars you're making Elite. Never use your best cars. Like if you've got the three-star Hurricane, I was just talking to somebody who, the other day who said, Man, I used my three-star Hurricane to make Elite, to get the Elite license. 
And you know what? That really sucks, but other cars will come along, all right, that you will be able to use. Bottom line, though, the three-star Hurricane is the one you want to you wanna get this. When you pull one with three stars, all right, if you haven't beat the Tempest races yet, start buying and stripping more of these from the dealership because this car will blast through all of the Tempest races no problem, all right? Tempest 1, you can, do with, you can do with cars that don't have any stars. Tempest 2, you're probably going to get away with it if you're using cars without stars. Tempest 3, you're pretty much going to need cars with stars, and they're going to need to be maxed out. So I would wait till, before you start putting your parts in a car to do Tempest, I would actually wait till you pull one that has the stars, okay? Because the star, you're going to need the starred versions for Tempest 3. But anyways, once you make a car elite, you know what I'm saying, it's great for live racing. So, for example, when Tempest 4 comes out, you know what I'm going to make elite for Tempest 4? I'm going to pick one of my best live racing cars. Alright, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm either going to do... Alright, I'm either going to do this Bugatti Santa Daiichi, or I'm going to do that... That really awesome Lamborghini Sesto Elemental. One of these two cars. All right, this has purple stars. It's got five purple stars, and it's a tier five car. All right, that means this car has the biggest respect point boost there is. And if I make one of these two elites, it's going to get even more. It's going to get like another, I think it is, 10% boost on respect points. So that'll make either one of these cars super amazing for earning respect points during live. So I would definitely, if you can, so there's two options. You make something elite just so you can get the elite license and get through it. So you just choose any other thing. Or you wait till you have a car that's going to be a great live racing car. And you make that elite. Now, you never want to make your fastest cars elite because you want to make sure you save those for the actual boss races. Okay? So you're going to need a, need a total of 15 cars just for the license. All right? Elite License 1 needs 5 cars, Elite 2 needs 5 cars, and Elite License 3 needs 5 cars. And then you're going to need another 5 cars to race the bosses. And I'm, making, I'm working on making videos for Tempest 1 and 2. I just finished my series on Tempest 3 telling you guys which cars to use. Now, that's going to be the most elaborate. The Tempest 1 and 2 videos are just going to be real, real... Since they're a lot easier... They're going to be really vague. I'm just going to tell you some recommended cars for that. The Tempest 3 tells you all kinds of different cars that will work. Alright, so if you want an in-depth version of which cars will work for Tempest 1, 2, and 3, alright, watch that video. Most of these cars are very hard to get stage 6 parts for and fusion parts. So for Tempest 1 and 2, we're just going to make a video of recommended cars that are a lot the easiest to get the parts for that will get, go through it, okay? At least for Tempest 1 and 2. Tempest 3 is where it really, really gets hard. Alright, so when it's time to start Tempest 1, you have to lock a non-elite car. Now, the Elite Customs on Legends, that's something different. You can actually use an Elite Customs car. You can't use a car that you made Elite by getting the Elite license, okay? But... When you go to start Tempest 1, it's going to start you off on, I can't remember what tier. I think it starts you on tier 3 and then goes to like tier 5 and 1 then 2. They do it in a weird order for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. But you actually have to lock in a car. And if you get stuck and you need to change cars, you're going to have to spend gold. I think it's around 500 gold to switch cars. All right. And... A lot of people are going to end up having to switch. A lot of those, a lot of the times, you're going to get stuck if you don't have cars upgraded enough, or you've chosen the wrong car. You're going to have to spend your gold to switch cars, and that's fine. All right, on Tempest Three, I think I think two or three times I had to switch a car because I didn't quite have something maxed out. But you can either wait, I mean, on Tempest 3, you're going to have to have your cars almost completely maxed in order to make it through a Tempest 3. Or, you might have a couple different cars, because, you know, you got speed traps, you got sprint races, and then you got the boss races. It's hard to find cars that are good at all three of those things put together. Though, so one car might have crazy, crazy good 0 to 100 time, 
but it might have a terrible top speed. It might only do 200 miles per hour, even though it speeds up from zero to 100 in two and a half seconds. Well, you can't hit that 260 mile speed trap with that car that only do, does 200 miles per hour. So you might have to switch to another car for the speed trap. All right, that kind of thing happens. Unless you use a correct car that's able, there's only a few cars on some of the tiers that can blow through all of Tempest 3. But, you know, check out the guides. It'll tell you all about which cars will work. And if you do get stuck, you can change cars. Now, when trying to get an Elite license, at least when I did it, okay, you didn't have to lock in a car for the Elite license. I could choose one car, and if I, if I, if I didn't make it, I could choose another car and go, go race it again. If that car didn't work. I could choose another one and go race it again. You know, it was just like a normal race. It was just kind of like... It was kind of like one of these regulation races, okay? Let's just let's just pretend, all right? Let's just pretend that this regulation right here is the elite license race, and it's just simply one race with a time trial. You know, you have to beat a certain time, and it'll actually tell you what that time is before you start it, I believe. Now, it's just just like this, okay? Let's just pretend I go to race this. And guess what? I just lost that race. Well, of course, I lost that one on purpose. So let's just pretend, okay, this car wasn't fast enough to beat that race. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to my garage. I'm going to choose another car, which as I know is a little bit faster now. And then I'm going to go race that again. So that's that's how that works on the the Elite License races. Um, I don't believe you have to lock anything in for those, which is nice. But when it comes to the actual Tempest races, you have to lock your car in. So yeah, I could pick this, and I could go right back out there, and I could try again. Or I, if I messed up a shift pattern or something, I could take this car right back into it and try it again. All right? All right, so these are the cars that I made elite, okay? All right, there's not one cover. I thought I was covering one there, so... I used the Toyota 86 for my Elite License one. All right, well, I'd have probably been better off using a different car because I'm never going to live race this Toyota 86. So in a way, it was a, it's another car that I have no use for and I can't strip it. It's just sitting in my garage collecting dust. So in a way, it was a mistake to make this car Elite. But at the same time... This car was fast enough to run the time. This car ran a 13.144 and beat the first Elite License. And you know what? It's good. I, this wasn't one of the better cars. This car can't beat the bosses. So even though it was a bad choice, it was also a good choice to use this. All right, the RS5 Coupe with two stars. That was probably a bad choice to use this car because this RS5 Coupe is actually capable of doing well on the Tempest races when it has two stars. Now the good news is this RS5 coupe has two stars, so if I wanted to live race with this thing, you know, it would it would earn some extra points. So this now has a live racing respect point bo boost, which is okay. It wasn't the best choice for it, but it worked. Now, I use this Shax Agira R, which is a terrible choice because this Shax car is horrible. This Shex car is horrible. The good news is this could never have beaten any of the bosses at all. The bad news is even though this is a five-star Purple Star car, this is, car is terrible at pretty much everything, including live racing. So if I would have if I would have made a really nice tier five car that was good at live racing elite, I could have got a great respect point boost when it wins, but this car is I'm never gonna use this car again. It, it's that bad, okay? So it was a good choice and a bad choice. The Audi TTRS, this was a very good choice to make a late just for the fact that it doesn't have stars and I'm never going to use this car again for anything. So this could have never beat any of the bosses. The reason it was a bad choice is because I'm never going to live race this and take advantage of the respect point boost. All right, the Jaguar F-Type all-wheel drive coupe. 
this was not a bad choice because from what I remember correctly, this car was kind of okay at live racing. I used to live race this car kind of often back before I had other good tier four cars. So for a while there, I did take the advantage of the respect point boost. And I don't think, I think this is a slower tier four car, so it couldn't have beat the bosses anyway. So that was not a bad choice. All right, my elite license too. Oh yeah, by the way, like I said, these are all excluded now. I can't run another elite license or I can't run a Tempest race with any of these cars because these are all made elite, okay? So the Abrath 500 with one star, I actually live raced that little guy sometimes, all right? He wasn't quite, this car is fast enough to beat, I think, Tempest 1 if you max it out. Maybe, I don't think it'll beat Tempest 2. It might, I'm not sure, but... Anyways, this was an okay choice. The Mustang GT Premium. Now, this could have actually beat Tempest 1, 2, and 3 if I got enough parts in it. So, this probably wasn't the best car to make Elite. Because now I can't use it for uh, anything else as far as Tempest goes. But, that's the one I chose. Alright, there's the Hurricane. Alright, there's the Lamborghini. Lamborghini. There's the Lamborghini Hurricane that's just sitting in my garage collecting dust. That was actually a really bad choice because I hate that car. I have no need for it. It has no stars. It just sits there. It doesn't even have any parts in it now. So I could have made a better choice. But then again, it, it probably couldn't have beat the bosses. So in a way, it wasn't a bad choice. These were the only cars at the time that I had fast enough. I didn't realize, hey, you should make live racing cars elite. You know, you should wait. I didn't realize that. I just said, you know what? As soon as I get a car that's fast enough, if it can't beat the bosses, or if I don't realize it can beat the bosses, it's going to be elite just to get through this thing. So either way, you know, do what you want. The WRX STI, this was a great choice because this is a really crap car, but... I'd have been better off using something that was good at live racing. The ACS-8. I don't know if that's a good live racing car or not. You know, I, I don't like the way this car drives at all. But, all right, good choice because I uh, it wasn't not a great car in my opinion. Bad choice because I don't ever live race with it. All right, so Elite, Elite 3, I used my Golf GTI with zero stars. To get my Elite 3, Elite 3 license. I'd have been better off using the one with one star because that gets more respect points. And it's a great live racing car. Um, the Hellcat. And it's okay. The F12 with three stars. I guess that's a okay choice. I don't know. My Ferrari F40. This was actually a really, really good choice to make Elite because this is an amazing live racing car. This is one of the few cars I can actually say I really chose correctly by using it. This car has a horrible 0 to 100 time. So this could never have beaten the some of the Tempest races. And now it's got a respect point boost for live racing. That was a very, very good choice. Now, Finn's Exige 360 Cup. Three purple stars. Great, great, great live racing car. That was an excellent choice to make Elite because it's, it does so well at live racing. Only problem is, this could have beat Tempest 1, 2, and 3, I believe, on its own. So it might not have been the best choice. When Tempest 4 comes out, I might be sorry that I don't have this car. Alright, you see what I'm saying here? So anyways, those are the cars I made Elite. Most of them were good choices as far as... I can't use that car to beat the Tempest bosses, but most of them were kind of bad choices because they're not cars that I'm going to live race ever, except for pretty much these two on the bottom. All right. So all these other elite cars were almost a waste to make elite, but at the time I was just trying to get through it. I just, I need a car that's fast enough to do this. And as soon as I said, Hey, I, that car is now fast enough to beat that elite license. Then I ran through it. Okay. So hopefully this really explains the whole Tempest thing to you guys. All right. I know this, I was expecting this video to be kind of short, but it ended up being a lot longer than expected. We're almost at 20 minutes. Um, I guess I went into a lot of detail here. 
I got the dual webcam setup going. Why? I don't know. Just to be goofy. Something different. All right, so hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully it helps, and I will catch you guys later. See ya.